are at episode 13. You Can you believe it? Thank you so much for joining us for the 13th episode of Mamas in Progress. We are your hosts, Cecily Rose. And I'm Shelby Renee. And we are so excited to talk about this subject today because if you're listening to this, it is either on or after November the 10th. So hopefully by then, prayerfully by then, we know who our elected officials are. Let's just all hope, (laughs) but we don't know. But what do you do after you vote? Because some of us are gonna be happy and some of us might be a little sad. Like what's the next step after you vote? And there's so many times you've listened to politicians and they're like, thank you for voting me in, but now the real work begins, right? We've all heard politicians say that. So we are so excited today to talk to Shania, who is very active in her community. And we feel like that's the next step, getting involved in your community, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I'm listening to everything you're saying. I'm nodding my head. That doesn't help on a podcast. Absolutely. I (laughs) couldn't agree more. And I'm so excited to have Shania here and hear all the gems that she's going to bestow upon us. Because let me tell y'all, she is a force. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, ladies. Yes, we are excited. So before we jump in, we're going to give a quick little bio and then we'll hop into the questions. Shania is the founder and CEO of Zawadi Cultural Collective. She's recognized for her unwavering commitment to art, women's empowerment, and community reform. For over 10 years, a decade, y'all, for (laughs) over a decade, Shania has developed social action programs for the community. She's got a long list of things that she does. From the creation of the Zawadi Scouts, which is a Girl Scout troop specifically for girls of color, to Kusima, did I say that correctly? Yay! Yay me! A leadership program for boys, Shania has focused on programs that uplift and enrich the economic and social development of her community. And the community that we're talking about, if you're on the East Coast, is right here in Los Angeles in the San Fernando Valley chapter. So let's get into this conversation. After you vote, it's time to get involved in your community. That's right. right? Yes. So for years, Shania, I've known you... um, as someone who's always active and in the community, whether you're volunteering for the Deltas or you're on a committee or you are organizing a vision board, like I, I've always admired that you have taken a stance in your community and said, okay, how can I, Shania, be a part of the solution as opposed to the problem, which I think is great after you vote right next. But even bef- before all of this politician stuff started happening, politics and all that, Like why community service? Why is that something that's so close to your heart? Like what inspired you to be so involved in your community? Well, community service has been something that's always just been a part of my life from being a Girl Scout uh, as a little kid, then to pledging Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated in 1992, where they instill community service, community service, community service. Um, It's just always been something that I just do naturally. I feel that if you are gonna be a part of this society, it's something that you have to do. There's no choice. That is so true. But some people Mm -hmm. don't get involved though. And you're involved in a lot of things. I know, can I say that you're you're part Jamaican and part Haitian? (laughs) (laughs) uh, Too late, Cecily, you just said it. But just growing up in Florida and living around a lot of people from the Caribbean, you know, there's that stereotype of the Jamaican that's always like hustling and has a lot of jobs Mm -hmm. and ambitious. And I just, you you fit that category. So before we even go any further, can you give us a rundown of all of the things that you're involved in so that our listeners know? And there's a long list, so get ready. Okay, so as I stated before, I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and I am the second vice president of our local chapter, which is here in San Fernando Valley. And as the second vice president, I am over their membership in hospitality. So I just bring all the warm and fuzzies to my chapter and I create activities to keep us together. I am also the founder of an all black Girl Scout troop called Zawadi Troop 3246 here in the San Fernando Valley. Um, We started about five years ago. I started the troop for my daughter when she was in kindergarten and we have now grown to 84 girls. It It is a sight to see, let me tell you. And we range from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade. I am also one of the co-founders of Zawadi Cultural Collective, which is a nonprofit here in the San Fernando Valley, where we provide cultural um, activities and events for the community. We do things from, we have our 
annual Juneteenth event, which is a free event we put on for the community, free food, free activities, free everything. Um, we also do um, a vision board party, which is like an, a women's empowerment event every January. And actually, that's how my nonprofit was birthed. Um, from having these vision board parties here at my house, I felt that it was something that we needed to reach outside of my circle with. So started here with about maybe 20 people at my house and every year we did it, it just grew and grew and grew until finally I was like, you know what? I want to reach others and I started this nonprofit and we started doing this event at the Toolbox in Chatsworth and, and that's where Zawadi was all birthed from. Um, what else do I do? Oh, and then I, I'm all, yeah, I'm, I'm Jamaican. The list was long. I told you. <laughs> I take all projects. I look, because if I don't see what I want, I create it because I don't feel you should have excuses for, well, I can't do this because there's not this and there's not that. Well, create it, create the platform that you want. So when we were having all of that civil unrest in like, um, like May after Ahmaud yeah. Arbery and mm -hmm. George Floyd, um, I was in a lot of mommy groups um, on social media and the energy in there had shifted horribly um, in a lot of those groups. So I decided that I wanted to create a safe space for us. So I created a Facebook group called Black in the Valley. Um, and with that space, it just started with me and a few of my friends and their friends and their friends. And now we've grown to almost, almost 4,000 people here in the San Fernando Valley. Yeah. And it's just a space for us to be able to express ourselves, um, a place for us to celebrate Black businesses in this area that I knew nothing about prior to starting the group. And it's just a space for us to celebrate each other. And we do different things um, throughout the uh, community. And yes. did you mention Kusima? Kusuma? Oh, right, right. So, Kusima, yes. So under, under Zawadi, we have a lot of things that we do, like our Girl Scout troop, which is Zawadi troop. We do that under uh, under Zawadi. Then also under Zawadi, we have Kusima Speaking and Leadership Collective. And that is basically our youth edition of a Toastmasters group where we have middle school and high school boys come together. We find them, we pair them with mentors. And over a six week period, we have them, um, we challenge them to use a prompt that we give them and express themselves, whether it be through, through poetry or making a video. Some guys even did a debate. We just want them to be able to find their voice, whatever their voice may be. Um, we did a, our first run was this past August and we had 30 amazing Kings do the program and it was, it was very successful. And so we hope to do it again um, in the beginning of next year. I love it. I mean, I'm inspired just listening to you as you listen. Yeah, I'm surprised you're not things. tired. Well, well, and, and that, and that's my question, because everything that you do, you do it at a level of excellence. I mean, if you all are listening, like, trust me, you need to check out all of these platforms, all of these programs on social media. Like you just perform at such a high level of excellency with all, all that you do and I'm always inspired by what you do but you have two kids a whole husband like how do you get everything done I really need to know I need some tips well you can't see what my desk looks like right now but I have notebooks and notes galore I have to write every single thing down to keep myself on track I have three calendars because I don't trust myself with just a phone. So I have to put everything on my phone. I have to put it in a handheld calendar and I have a calendar on the wall. So I have to keep myself organized and multitask a whole lot in order to keep me on track. And um, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes the family does suffer a little bit um, because when I commit to doing something, I give it 110%. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. there have been times where I'm in the middle of a, a meeting and I realize, oh, shoot, it's 830 and I still haven't fed my kids dinner yet. So sometimes, you know, I am a mama in progress where I <laughs> make mistakes and uh, my kids stumble along the way. But um, but I see the bigger picture. Uh, I mean, they're not starving. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll eventually right. feed them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the, the bigger picture is they see us doing good in the community because with our nonprofit, mm -hmm. they're part of it. They are the nonprofit as mm -hmm. well. And we have them very much involved. So, and I think that, that helps too. By having the whole family involved, it helps right. lighten the load a lot. 
And I appreciate you being honest about that, right? Like we can't do it all. We're not super women. I mean, we are super women, but we're not, we're, we're not superheroes. Like they don't exist. Let's just be clear. Right. And, and, and it's totally okay. Right. Because like you said, the greater good and what they're getting out of it. Well, how do you like just manage your time? Like, do you devote like one day a week to different projects or are you just working on everything every day or how do you figure that out? The way my mind works is that I have to work on everything every single day. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't gotten it down to a science where I'm like, okay, I'm only going to give this an hour. Or I'm only going to give that an hour. I'm trying to get there because some projects can consume my time, but um, I have to tackle everything daily so that nothing slips through the cracks. So I was like, okay, after this, I have a Girl Scout meeting. And then tomorrow mm -hmm. I got to get ready for our Girl Trek activity. And then I got to do Zawadi. So every day, everything that I'm doing is in my mind. Now, see, the, we said a long list and you just said Girl Trek, which is another thing that you didn't uh, mention. So right. just talking about the community and for those who are listening, we're just going to backtrack just a teensy bit. Okay. Can you let us know what the Girl Trek is about? And then we'll we'll pick back up as well. So um, again, with us being um, safer at home, um, a lot of us haven't been able to interact with our friends. Our children have not been able to, to socialize. And a lot of us have just been sitting on our tails doing Zooms and we haven't been able to be active. So there's this awesome organization called Girl Trek. And um, I reached out to them, uh, myself and my partner in crime, Daisha Britt Wills, and we started a Girl Trek team. And with that, we meet every Sunday at a local um, facility and we opened it up to women and their children. So we get to socialize, the kids get to run and play and burn off some energy. And, and, and we all get to come together as a community. And what we're doing, we're also doing themes. So one week we'll do a voter shirt. Another week we did um, wear pink for breast cancer awareness. And then today we did um, a bully busters class. So after our walk, we came back to our meeting spot and we had someone come in from a, a company called Bully Busters and they taught us some self-defense moves. So we're just trying to keep it fun and exciting, but keep it, keep it safe. Everybody wears their mask. We try to keep the distance, but them kids, you know, when they see each other, ah! right. <laughs> but, but yes, so we do that every week. And actually today is our one month anniversary of our walks. So, and it's, and also being, uh, being active in my community holds me accountable. Mm -hmm. Because I'm one of those people that have just been sitting on my tail doing Zooms. So I know I need to get out there, but I needed that motivation. And so the fact that I have to be there every Sunday at 9 a.m. to welcome these people, you know, makes me accountable for my own well-being. That's so amazing that you're able to have all of these balls juggling in the air at the same time. One of my favorite initiatives that you have that you mentioned earlier was the... Um, Black in the Valley Facebook page. And it's such a great resource. And I was like, that is so genius because here we are in California, in LA, in the Valley. And I had no idea, first of all, that, that were, there were that many African-American families and just seeing the wealth of resources. Um, so I feel like that page kind of like runs itself. It's just kind of like, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, it's just been a great resource to connect whether I need a plumber or I'm just, I mean, I feel like it's like the black uh, Instagram of the Valley, you know, like I go in there and see like, okay, what's, what's popping this week? What are folks mm -hmm. talking about this week? So mm -hmm. how do you, like, do, does that take up a lot of your time the, with the um, Facebook Black in the Valley? In the beginning, when it was first created, it did take up a bit of my time because it, it, it runs itself, but you still have to, to um, oversee some things because in the beginning, people didn't really know what the rules were. And we want to we wanna create an atmosphere where it's a safe space where people can express themselves. And we also don't want it to be a personal space for people either. We want everybody to, to shine and to gain from all the resources there. So I had to do a lot of monitoring mm -hmm. in the beginning, but that, that has definitely died down. So yeah, pr it pretty much runs itself. And every week, a new business that we didn't know about is, is popping up. People are meeting their neighbors. 
Um, people, are, you know, there are people who live right around the corner that they never knew about, but they find them right there on Black in the Valley. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just been an amazing resource. I've gotten my dog washed by somebody Black. <laughs> I've got my car fixed by somebody Black. I, it's, it's an amazing resource. Yeah. And what was your inspiration behind that? Like what, because what I felt like I found out about it um, this earlier this year, like around March, April, was it something that you created as a response to the social climate or is this something that's been going on for a while and then it all of a sudden it gained popularity? No, it is, it is definitely, Black in the Valley is definitely something that started from all of the um, social um, unrest. Um, I just wanted to create a safe space for the people in the San Fernando Valley. There are pl there are lots of black in the black in LA and black right. in New York and black in the black in the black in the. But then when I went to search, I was like, we don't have any black people in the valley. Like how come there's no black in the valley? So I decided to start it. And like you said, if you build it, they will come. And it's amazing how many people have come from it. But yeah, it was created to create a safe space for us to express ourselves since we were dealing with a lot at the time. And unfortunately, we still are dealing with a lot. So we allow people to express their views um, in a safe space without feeling judged by the outside world. And what's so beautiful about Black in the Valley and all the other things that you do is that you don't just like watch you know so many people can be what is it doom scrolling and you know in their feelings but they don't take action and what's beautiful is that you take action like with for your daughter you you're like let me start an all black girl scout troop black in the valley there's a need like and it these are things that really serve us in so many ways and i just want to shout you out for that and really just encourage anyone who's listening think about like cecily said like what can you do what's that next step how do you actually take action not just be mad about it or agree group text about it, like actually do something, put some energy behind it. And I want to give you a shout out for the Black in the Valley swag. So if you're not watching on YouTube, you need to head on over to the YouTube so you can check out the fab, one of the fabulous t-shirt designs, the real dope queens of the San Fernando Valley. Um, and we'll, we'll shout out, well, what's the website if people want to just check it out? Not the Facebook group, not just the Facebook group, but the website. Well, we have for Zawadi, which is the umbrella for it, for it all, ZawadiCulturalCollective.com. You can go there and find out about all of our different programs. And then if you would like to buy one of these wonderful shirts, we have we do have swag on that site as well, but we also have blackinthevalley.org. If you are not in the Valley and you just want to support what we're doing, or if you come, you're planning on visiting the Valley, we have a directory on there where you can find local businesses, local restaurants, things of that nature. So blackinthevalley.org or zawadiculturalcollective.com. Great. And so I didn't, Cecily, I didn't mean to derail the interview, but I just had to mention the t-shirt before I forget. But Shania, I also wanted to just ask you, cause you know, my kids are three and five. So community service, I'm like you in the sense that like I went to Spelman, you know, community service is really big. Um, and just growing up, it was always important to me, but I'm having a hard time like getting my kids or instilling in my kids why it's important to pay it forward. So what advice would you give to moms who are trying to encourage their kids to have that spirit to serve? Lead by example. A lot of times, you know, they're not going to fully understand the bigger picture. They're not going to understand, well, why do I have to wake up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to go stuff some bags to give to the homeless? Why do I? They're not always going to understand it when you just say it to them. But knock, knock, time to wake up. We're going down there. And then they get to see for themselves why they're serving. And if you do it on a consistent basis, it's just going to be a part of their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So for me and my kids, they don't have a choice. If mama's going to serve, you're going to serve. And eventually it's, there's going to come a time where they're going to tell you, I'm going on my own. You don't need to go with me. Mm -hmm. So just lead by example. That's, that's my best advice. That's really good. So as you continue to lead by example, which of these projects or initiatives or platforms do you feel is closest to your heart? Hmm, the one... And I know it's probably hard to choose because they're probably you're like, even though you have two children of your own, you're like, these are my babies too. I don't, you know, I can't pick a favorite or maybe what's one of the projects that you worked on and you're like, that really means a lot to you. This holds a special place in your heart. 
I think the one that probably means the most to me, like you said, they're all special to me, um, would be my Girl Scout troop. Mm -hmm. Um, I love those girls dearly. Um, you know, in the five, six years that we've been around, we've become a family and I see the effect that it has on a lot of these girls. And we're actually going to be graduating our first girl out of the troop who's been with us. <laughs> yeah. So I already know there's going to be waterworks. Look, I'm getting teary eyed just thinking about it. Yeah. So she's going to be graduating and going to high school. And if you see this, this young lady, I mean, she's amazing. I, I feel proud in knowing that we have turned out an amazing leader. She's going to take this world by storm. Um, so I, I would say my Girl Scout troop is definitely the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Like, so how, like, how do you, you said that you can see the change, like on a, on a personal level, like, how do you see the change? Are you saying they're growing as being more confident or is it their leadership skills? Like, what is it that you're seeing manifesting as a result of the Girl Scout troop? Definitely the confidence, the girls have become more vocal. Um, and we are, Girl Scouts itself is girl led. And so what we are doing now is as the girls get older, because we have a lot of high school girls as well, we turn it to them. We're like, okay, now it's time for you guys to step up. I will help you run the Zoom, but the Zoom is all yours. You lead the meeting. I will help you set something up, but it's on you. You need to figure out how it works. Like tonight we have a meeting um, with my cadets, which is a leader that I'm personally over. And it's a, it's a meeting with parents and girls because I'm like, this is your truth. So you are going to have input in this activity we have coming up. So we teach them to be leaders and take um, take charge of their own activities and be accountable because we also have, we have a parent chat and a girl chat. So what I put in the girl chat, I put in the parent chat, but it's not for the parents to respond to me. It's for the girls to respond to me because now that you know what's due, now that you know what we have to do, you are now accountable. So we just hold them to that. See, this is why getting involved in your community is so important because our elected officials cannot create the leaders of tomorrow on a micro level the way that people in the community can, the way mamas can. So I just want to say shout out for that. That's why we think this is so important. So if you're listening and you're a mom, this is why we wanted to have this conversation today because you cannot rely on your elected officials to instill certain things in your children or in the community the way you can. They're not going to do it with your sauce, with your flavor, with your attitude. So, okay, I know you got a thousand things, but what's next? What is next for you? And I know that you got something cooking and brewing over there. <laughs> like, you know what? I, listen, I got, to, I got to do more. Well, so, you know. <laughs> we don't want to make our listeners be like, well, dang, she got something else, but we are here to inspire you. So right. don't take it as, as, a, as a humble brag. Take it as this is just, we're offering you ways that you can um, get involved in your community. So Ms. Shania, what is next? So um, what is next? Um, in the near future, Zawadi Cultural Collective is actually going to host a community drive-in because we are, you know, pretty much stuck at home and we don't get a chance to ne necessarily see each other. We are going to put on a drive-in, which will be November 27th. Okay, which okay. Will be the, the day after Thanksgiving. Hopefully this will be airing before then, but oh, I don't yes, know. Absolutely, it will. Yeah. Yes, it'll, it'll be good, airing good. Uh, November 10th, anytime after that. So this is perfect timing. Yes, so November 27th here in San Fernando Valley, we'll be doing a drive-in. And Cecily knows that I am quite extra. I don't do anything regular. So no. it is going no. to be a theme drive-in. We are going to be showing The Wiz with <laughs> sing-along and costume contest. <laughs> Wow. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going, it's going to be exciting. So we're planning that in the near future. Um, then also um, with Black in the Valley, we will be doing a marketplace where we're going to um, display all the different businesses here in the San Fernando Valley. We do those every three months. So this will be December 19th. And at that particular marketplace, we will be having our Kwanzaa celebration as well. So we are going to have Black Santa. He will be bearing free gifts for the community. Um, and we're going to just have a good time. And going back the day before the marketplace, my Girl Scout troop is actually going to be hosting an online Kwanzaa celebration. 
So um, be sure to check that out as well. And let's see, what else, what else? That's um, enough. <laughs> no, I got, I got one last thing. Okay, come with it, give it to us. Uh, I am actually running for my neighborhood council board. Yeah. And um, hopefully next time you see me, I'll be a board member, but you know, we'll, we, okay. we will see what happens. But yes, I am running for Winneka Neighborhood Council. Okay, question. How does that work? That's because that wasn't on the election ballot this go around. So how does that work? I, I think every board does it differently. Like Winneka Neighborhood Board, they, um, the current board members, they vote. Okay. But it's, it is up to them if you get on board or not. Okay, so it's not like you have to campaign and go out into the Winneka neighborhood. You just need to be visible and they vote you in the board. Right, right. Yes, exactly. But I love that because that's another example of how we as moms can get involved in our local neighborhoods and communities so that you can affect change for what's going on on your block. Yes, right, exactly. And for me, representation matters. Representation matters. Representation matters. So um, I think it would be a good thing for me to be a part of the board and show the other people that look like me in my community that I'm here to support you. You know, that's so, we're going to wrap up, but that's so important that you mentioned that because I think as Mamas in Progress or other moms that are listening around the country, they may be in a neighborhood that might not necessarily look like the neighborhood that they grew up in. And so they just kind of mm -hmm. feel like, oh, I'm in this neighborhood. None of my neighbors look like me. I'm going to have to try to reach out to find pockets of, of people who look like me, but it's like, no, you can get involved right in your neighborhood, no matter who's on the border, no matter, even if your neighbors don't necessarily look like you or share the same ethnic background, you live there, you pay taxes there, yeah. your children go to school there. So guess mm -hmm. what? That is your community. Whether mm -hmm. you choose to be involved in it or not, then that's your choice. But so kudos to you for just getting involved in a community where it might not be where everybody looks the same on the block. So I just hope that more moms are inspired to get involved in their community, um, no matter where they live. So before we wrap up, let us know how can people follow you? Are you on social media? What's the best way to get in contact with you? All that good stuff, drop them all. And also, yeah. how can, and also before you start, how can we support? So whether people yes. are local here in LA or elsewhere, how can we also support everything that you're doing? Well, we are a 501c3 nonprofit and you can always support by donating. <laughs> So um, our website is ZawadiCulturalCollective.com, ZawadiCulturalCollective.com, and we take donations there. So sorry. No worries. I'm a mama. Yes. Oh, we're in progress. I'm fully in progress. Yes, <laughs> we're in progress. No worries. <laughs> So yes, ZawadiCulturalCollective.com, we take donations. And then also when we do our activities, we also take in-kind donations. So if anybody ever wants to donate water, snacks, anything of that nature, please contact us at, at Zawadi Cultural Collective on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I don't do Twitter too much. So don't, don't, don't tweet me because I'm not going to respond. So Instagram or Facebook at Zawadi Cultural Collective. And as always, we put these in the show notes. So if you're on um, listening to us, you can get them on the show notes and you can also see them underneath the YouTube video as well on Black Oak TV. Thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate you ladies and I love you ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. We couldn't think of a more perfect person to be a part of this conversation when it comes to community service. So kudos to you, hats off yeah. to you. We need more mamas in progress who are involved in the community. And as I've said, I'm going to say it again, that after you vote, the next step is to get involved in whatever way, shape, or form that looks like to, for you. So thank you so much. And we appreciate it. I appreciate you, ladies. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Bye. That was great, right? Yes. Yes. I'm so inspired just listening to her. She is just, like I said, a force. Yes. And it's so important. Like we don't know what the political outcome of this election is going to be, but regardless of whether or not your candidate, or what it is, because once this comes out, regardless of what the outcome is, is like we shouldn't right. get discouraged. We should not get discouraged because 
no matter who's in office, you have the power within your own community to get involved. That is amazing. I just wanted to um, shout out when we talk about reactions, she talked about the Juneteenth celebration mm -hmm. and my son entered her uh, writing contest. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's so important to me is because that's something that he would not been able to get at his school. They're not going to be writing essays about the Juneteenth. And that's not something that necessarily I could do unless I forced it on him. So just her having that platform, hey, we're having a writing contest, win $100. You know, my, my son was all over that $100. And of course he won, but that's just something that was so invaluable to me that she offered for the community. You know, he's always going to remember that uh, memory. So shout out to her for that. What did you take away or what are you um, thinking? Yeah, I just love that where she sees a need, she creates change, like she makes change happen. She doesn't sit around waiting for someone else to do it. And I just love that when she talked about the starting the Girl Scout troop, it's like, you know, I love being a Girl Scout, but I, it never occurred to me and now having a young daughter to, you know, there's not an all black Girl Scouts troop, start one, you know? And I just, I really challenge again, everyone who's listening, think about like, what are the needs in your community and how can you help to meet those needs? And even with the Facebook group, again, she saw a need and she, and she's just so creative. She thinks outside of the box. So it's like, how can you meet a need, but also make it fun, like make it. So it's something that is fun for you. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like a burden. I feel like a lot of times people think of like serving as like, oh, I have to sacrifice something and it's going to be not sexy or not engaging or not something that's entertaining for me, but you can do both. And I, I, that's what really inspires me about her story. And even when she was talking about like the drive-in, like that, she made it fun, like having, showing the whiz and, you know, everybody gets to come and making it like a moment. I just love how she brings the creativity to everything that she's doing. And she's inspired by when she sees that there's a need for something and, and thinking about ways that she can help meet those needs in fun and creative ways. Yes, exactly. And when I think of community service, there are times I'm like, you know what, the idea of being out in the community, like I have my own issues that I got to deal with. So mm -hmm. you definitely hit it right there. You've got to find something that feeds your soul, that makes you happy so that it doesn't feel like a burden. Because I mean, you know, you think of community, so you think of volunteering, or you think of doing something like, child, we about to do some labor up in here. But if it's something that speaks to you in your soul, it's not going to feel like burdensome work. So you're absolutely right. Um, about that. Absolutely. And um, I guess we should roll into the tips. We're moving right along today, huh? Yeah, yeah. Tips sound good to me. You got, you want to start us off? Well, I was just thinking about the community service and I didn't even remember. I just totally forgot about it. Rec, rec centers, you know, like, you have like mm -hmm. the Vienna Sherman Oaks Rex or the whatever, whatever. The parks, rec usually center. your local park. So wherever you live. Right. Wherever yeah. you live, they're always looking for teachers or volunteers or mm -hmm. coaches. And I was just thinking about, wow, how has our family been involved in the community? I was like, duh, my husband was a coach for my son's um, basketball team. And I was like, when he goes to grocery stores or whatever, he goes to that park, people are like, oh, hey, Coach Barnes. Hey, Coach Barnes. Hey, Coach mm -hmm. AB. And I was like, wow, he's actually someone that's in the community making a difference. And these kids are looking to him like, that's coach. You know what I mean? And that's something he loves basketball. So talk about meeting the need and making mm -hmm. it feed soul. So it doesn't have to be something labor. So you're like, child, I don't have time. God bless Shani, but I don't have that kind of time. Think of something that feeds your soul and that you already love anyway, so that you're going to be able to do. So um, that's one place to start. We hadn't even talked about churches and organizations and sororities and just the obvious ways that you can get involved in your community. But um, the rec center is one that I just wanted to point out. Yeah, no, I think that's a great tip. And I think when you give of your time, we've failed to remember when we were younger and it doesn't take much to have a lasting impact on a child. I mean, I think about just somebody coming to speak to a youth group I was a part of and what that meant to me. And so that kind of leads into my first tip, which is it's okay to start small. I think it can be overwhelming and daunting. And it's like, you hear someone like Shania, who's like doing like amazing things, but you can start small. And if you're like, you know, I'm struggling with time or I'm not exactly sure what I want to do or how I want to serve. Maybe you just start with adopting one family or one young person it, that you know has a need. Um, so I just want to encourage people like just start with something, whatever it might be until you figure out what that thing is. 
Yes, that's a great tip. And I just wanted to also mention that um, volunteering and being in the community is not something that you can just kind of take lightly. I mean, we think about President Barack Obama. He started as a grassroots community organizer. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to um, mention a quote that he said, uh, Mr. Obama or President Obama called it the best education I ever had, better than anything I got at Harvard Law School, an education that he said was seared into my brain. That's what he said about his three years as a community service leader. So that time that he spent was invaluable to who he is as a leader now. Um, so that's just, uh, I, I love that he said that. And then Sean, you touched on it as well. I was gonna say for my next tip is make it a family affair. Um, there's a, one particular time, there's a lady here in Los Angeles who feeds people in the um, North Hollywood uh, Park and she feeds the homeless. And um, before the pandemic, she used to do it every week faithfully. And um, it was something that I started to do with my son. And it was such a great way to have a conversation about homelessness, inequality, choices that you make in life. So, and it was something that we would do every now and then, maybe once a week, but it was just a great launching pad to have deeper and better conversations. But there's all types of ways that you can get involved with your family. So you make it like a family fun event. Um, because I'm sure like Shania is probably going to need volunteers at the Wiz for, you know, passing out food. That's fun. Like you get to volunteer, do something for your community and family all at the same time. So that's my um, next tip. Yeah, I think that's a great tip. And that's something I'm going to take that advice. And uh, in terms of like trying to get my kids started with community service, because they can start at this age, there's something they can do. They can hand out a piece of paper or something, honey, mm -hmm. put something in a bag. So I think that's a great tip. And that's something I'm going to, I'm going to say it now and hold myself accountable in 2021. Yes. That's something that I'm going to certainly try, not try, I'm going yes. to do um, and report back. Okay, right here on this podcast. Um, as far as my next tip, I think it kind of goes along with what we've been saying is like, as moms, we have a lot of demands on our time. So it's like, how else can I do something? And one thing that I learned from a lot of my friends during this current election year, whoo, what a doozy, um, was people just did things like phone banking or text banking is new. So you can literally just send out text messages and it doesn't have to be related to an election. It could be for, I mean, the holidays are coming up. So this is a big fundraising push for most organizations or nonprofits. This is when, and let's be clear, given all that's going on, people aren't fun having these big galas and, and all these fundraising events like we normally would. So there's a real need and terms of like they still have to fundraise like I'm a part of a few organizations and we're soliciting through letters and and different ways but my point is is you can find a local organization or organization that speaks to you and 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 do something like text banking something that I did for my birthday this year um, is that I through Facebook because Facebook and you can leverage social media in so many positive ways we always hear see the negative and we highlight the negative hashtag need a Birkin forget about that right there's um there are ways like so for facebook you can partner with is it i think it's donorschoose.org and you can pick a um an organization that you can host a fundraiser on your facebook profile it literally took me a minute to set it up i already knew i'm sorry donors choose is the organization that i set it it up with sorry y'all but you can go through Facebook and I think it's create a cause um I clearly need some more coffee today um so but you can select and there's a, a I mean there's a whole list of organizations that you can select from and um so that's something that I would also encourage people to do, like look at ways that you can like just leverage the platforms you already have, like your Facebook account and and start create something so that people can just easily donate that way. Yeah, that was a really smart, fun, creative way to just get money quick. And you raised quite a bit of money. I mean, you went well over your projected goal. Mm -hmm. So that was awesome. And that just speaks to you that everyone was like, oh, this is something that's close to Shelby's heart. And they were like, happy birthday. And they were able to, with a click, make a donation to something that was close to your heart that they knew was going to feed your soul. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good one. 
Yeah, and I, I want to continue doing that. So I think that's something that people can think about, especially as the holidays approach us. Forget, you know, I mean, yes, you can get the gifts and things, but it's nice. That's a way that we can serve. I, I really, you know, so we can serve with our time, but it, it also takes money, finances. We know that. So maybe you don't necessarily have it in your budget, but there are ways that you can help to crowdfund to um, help the organizations that are meeting these needs and doing the actual work. Yes, doing the work. That's what it is. First, we party with a purpose. Then we voted in style. Now we are serving with some swag. So we are, we're trying to move this train right along. That was great. I think we should hop right into our mama wins and mama rants for the week. I'm inspired for sure to get more involved in the community. Um, so yeah, what's your mama win or mama rant for yeah. this week? Well, my win for this week, and I posted this on our uh, Instagram. I posted a photo at least. So check it out at Mamas in Progress on Instagram. If you don't follow us yet, you need to. You should. (laughs) Let them know. You should. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, um, my kids' school, because my kids have been back in-person learning um, because they're in preschool and, you know, thankfully it's been very safe, but this was our first. So normally um, schools, uh, public and private, they have like a, their fall fundraiser or their fall festival. And so of course that's like a special time of year for the school. So um, my kids school, they, I love what they did. They made a pivot similar to what Shania is planning. And they, um, here in California, and I think all over the country, the drive-in theater, honey, has made a come back okay, okay? Isn't that random that's so cool yes, that come so, back. who would have thought in 2020 right. okay because like somebody was asking well, when was the last time we were driving I was like like never because it's just not something that we did there were just so many other options but anyway so they um took over like a couple screens at a local drive-in theater and we had a school wide event event where everybody was physically distanced in their cars, but it was just so beautiful to see all the school come together finally, because, you know, most people are still doing distance learning at home. And it was just a nice way I was able able to see some mommy friends that I haven't seen since February. And so it was just, and, but, you know, and it was done safely. We were able to raise money for the school and it was just a really nice event. So that was my win for the week. How about you? win that is a great win just being able to connect with people you haven't seen in a long time what is my win for this week well I'm still just so proud of us and I know we've said it before but I feel like my mommy win is that we got through the party with a purpose and we did it online Mm -hmm. on our IG live and um, I was just so excited that other mamas were able to tune in and um, learn and they seemed like they enjoyed the um, online uh, event or presentation. So that's a mommy win. Cause I was a little stressed out about it, you know, just kind of preparing for it and learning all of the, um, the initiatives and measures that were on the ballot. So I'm glad that we got that. And of course I voted. That's my yes. mommy win. I voted. I feel like that is a huge cloud uh, taken off of me. And if you can't see, I have some cute little nails that uh, nail uh, stickers that were given to me by cutie.com. So check them out. But that's a mommy win. Like we voted. I'm done with it. I have done my civil duty. And now I'm ready to get involved in the community, slaying in the community with the service. But that's definitely a win for me. My husband voted as well. So we, we're done. Yes, yes, it, it's done. It's at least locally, it should be done by the time this podcast comes out for sure. Yes. <laughs> but yes, yes. And I love your nails are so cute. Yes, thank you. I'm going to do some more um, posting on social media about them. So that's my mommy. And I'm sure they have other designs too, right? Because the holidays is coming, hunty. And I still have, y'all, I cannot. And I really like them. This This is is my first time. Go ahead. This is the first year in my life that I have not been to the nail salon all year. I've been going to the nail salon since I was 14, y'all, which that's a whole nother conversation and intervention that's needed. But I was just like, I don't know how much more I can take, but I love those nails because at least that's a way that you could do it in a fun way and still make it. I'm so sorry, y'all. It is so loud in my house. So no, I hope you, you can't don't hear it. it. You can't hear it. Oh, you know, thank God. I haven't okay. been to the nail salon all year either. It hurts. It is painful. This is the very first time that I've done the stickers and I really like them. I was like, oh, wow, I, I should do this more often. But girl, the struggle is real with these nail salons. Like I'm not even going to attempt to try to go this year, but for now I'm holding it down with these stickers. That's all I got. It's a great solve. I love it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Well, all right. We got lucky number 13 in the bag. Yes. We are full grown teenagers. We are. Oh my gosh. We, we just went right past tweens and now we into the teens. All right, y'all let's do it. Yeah. So <laughs> next week, um, well, I don't want to tell you what's next week. Just yes, tune let's in. Just, yes. We'll leave it there. Well, tune mm-hmm. in. We've got a great episode for you coming up for next week. We think you're going to enjoy it. We do not take it lightly that you listen to us, that you support us. We thank you so much for every click, download, like. We thank you for all of that. So thank you for rocking with us and um, please take care of yourselves. And And before we go, don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Mamas in Progress. You can also find us on Facebook at Mamas in Progress. You can find us on YouTube at Black Oak TV and you can shoot us an email, mamasinprogress at gmail.com. Yes, thank you. Because I just skip right on over all of that. <laughs> thank you for holding it down. Thank you so much. Okay, so are we ready to say take care? Yeah, mama's oh, out. Mama's out. <laughs>